So lean a little on your friends They will carry you Shelter from the stormy nights Lean a little on your friends They will guide you through You know you're gonna be alright Looking at all Welcome to Final Show. I'm John, the executive producer here, and I've just got a few pre-show notes for you. First of all, I want to let everybody know that our addresses have changed. Uh, our Twitch channel has changed from Sinstaku to twitch.tv slash Final Show Films, and our YouTube channel has also changed to youtube.com slash Final Show Films. Next, we want to thank our $20 tier supporters on Patreon, which is patreon.com slash films, by the way, if you want to go throw a couple bucks our way. That's going to be Cat Waterflame, Antitonic, Samantha Bates, and Maureen Monty. Thank you guys for that. Also, our website is in the process of getting updated. So go take a look at finalshowfilms.com. We've got Mara and Jeremy are working on updating all of our stuff there, making it look nice and like a modern website and frankly they know what they're doing far better than i or austin ever did so if you want to check out the things that are changing over there they go do that follow us on twitter at final show films for updates uh for all future things including things that are going on with our website and going with the patreon page and things that are going on live as we stream them uh, as well as our podcasts and everything else so thank you very much for watching y'all have a good day And we're live. Welcome, <clears throat> everybody, to yet another episode of Conflux. Everyone is Warlocks. I'm Jack, your game master and storyteller for this Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition campaign. And joining me today is my fantastic cast of characters, all living, breathing, and present, starting with John. I am John. I am playing Heaton, the tiefling noble, and I am definitely both living, breathing, and present. And Jeremy? Hello, my name is Jeremy. I am playing um, Korshana, 
What's, what the fuck is my character's name? <laughs> Korshana. Uh, uh, they're Kalistar. And William? Hi, I'm William, and I'm playing Wotan Saltsbury, the dwarven pirate, and I'm certainly breathing and present. And Cody? I'm Cody, I'm playing Cole, the shifter urchin, back to the chain. And Aaron? Hi, I'm Aaron. I am playing Maja, the Eloxodon on healer. Er, and I'm the one who makes sure everyone who's living, breathing, and present stays that way in game. <laughs> and Mara? Hi, I'm Mara, and I'm playing a really a Clementine ever <laughs> human archaeologist, uh, Pact of the Blade Warlock. And Nikki. Hi, I'm Nikki. I'm playing Diamond Katara, the Earth Genasi, uh, Pact of the. Pack to the blade, warlock. I'm I'm alive, barely breathing though. <laughs> <laughs> and our last moments in conflux were spent in the Hopsburg Memorial Gardens, where the majority of the Hawkshead Compact is busy cleansing the undead population and collecting skulls for bounty purposes. Confronted by oozlings and decaying warriors, the warlocks fought alongside their friend Torvald Fauntleroy before meeting a second individual, also hunting the gardens. Another Kalashtar named Virshana, who recruited their help in searching for the grave of Irnashana the Elder. But our eyes are first drawn to the main room of Hawkshead House back in Knivesfont, where Diamond sits contemplating her stolen facet record. Hi. So Diamond, you're seated at the main table in the primary entry <clears throat> room. You've been studying this crystal off and on for the past few days, ever since you guys stole it uh, from underneath Shadow Shades, trying to really get a sense of what its nature is. The rest of your friends left earlier today, and you opted to continue to take some time. This, this has become a little bit of an obsession for you. And so you stare at the crystal, looking into its red faceted structure, trying to determine where that resonance is. It comes and goes. Usually it's present, at least faintly, sometimes stronger than others, but right now it seems a little bit quieter than usual, than it has been over the past few days. So what do you do? Uh, Diamonds. Diamonds gonna... She saw Maja do it. She probably tries to do the... Uh, put up to the light and catch the light on one of the facets again and kind of replays the message. She can find it. And then tries to see if she can unlock other things by turning it in different directions. Kind of talks so, to it a little bit too. <laughs> so you manipulate this crystal back and forth through the light, letting the the single message contained therein play out a couple times. And then after Reg and the Thanath's final words recorded on this plane fade into silence and the image vanishes. You twist it trying to see if you can find anything else, any other clues to the functionality there. Are you feeling ill, little gemstone? No. No. The Marquis steps into your line of vision. His autumn leaf cloak thrown back over one shoulder. He's actually carrying it, not wearing it right now. Well, that sword is going to be very put out if it discovers all your friends went off and had heroic battles and you missed out because you were playing with a rock. I mean, I'm a rock. It's a rock. Probably get along very well. Doesn't seem to be the case. I'm trying to make friends. How's that going? Uh, 
Yes, I thought so. Oh, look, very well. Look, you melancholy thing. You spent centuries locked away underground, and this one has been kind enough to bring you out into the open and show you any number of things that you never would have dreamed of experiencing otherwise. So the least you can do is show a little respect and gratitude. He's obviously addressing the crystal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine, then. If you're going to be a stickler for protocol, I invoke the ancient concord by blood and bond and bone. And he makes a quick gesture at you in a sort of get on with it sort of way. I, I don't know what to do. You want me to try do the to thing. Okay. The light thing or the binding thing? Yes. Uh, Diamond, cast the cast <coughs> bind on it again. Give me a wisdom save. Oh boy. Oh lovely. Oh. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. DC was a 16, sorry. Oopsie doopsies! So these golden beams of light once again erupt from your hands and latch around this thing, and you feel that resonance just spike into severity again. And the crystal slams into your chest. You feel a shaft of terror just drive through your mind. Death is imperatively imminent. Fear of the unknown dangers that lurk in the shadows ahead just completely overwhelms your mind and you collapse backwards onto the stone floor. Your pulse is racing, your breath catches in your throat. It passes after a few moments, but there's a low-grade, terrified chill that is settled into your chest, emanating from the red crystal, now more or less entirely ensconced in your chest cavity with just a few little edges of it visible through the the skin that's now covering it. Ow. Uh, is that what I was supposed to do? He's got his fingers raised to his lips. Delicious. Uh. Fascinating. I do wonder what she had planned. Go ahead and give me an insight check as well. Hmm. Yeah, something weird happened. You have no idea if that was what was supposed to have happened. But before you can really consider it much forward, he points to the door. Uh, Cora's just through there and she needs your help, so run along. You are. I like the sword better. Well, take it with you then. Always do. That's a good girl. I'm Hurry sure. up. She Could have need some help. Uh, They're like busy or something. At least help me up. You find yourself standing on your feet. You didn't feel any lift. You're just standing in front of the door. He's got his hands on both your hips and he just sort of Gives you a nudge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you've, you've muted yourself, I think, Nikki. I can't hear you. Oh, just quiet. There we go. Yep. <laughs> just quiet. <laughs> yep. Uh, I go through the door. Always watching. That's and not it's creepy. <laughs> Elsewhere in the city, a cold, sharp wind moans through the Hopsbrook Memorial Gardens, shaking the hedges and trees that it passes. A small pile of green slime shudders vaguely in a sort of disconsolate manner as the chilly breeze blows past. It pokes a jagged chunk of bone at a large mushroom growing near a solitary mausoleum and then kind of slurps around it. Fungus begins to dissolve under the acidic interior of the injured oozling. I eldritch blast it. You're not there. Damn it. <laughs> One of the several deep gashes in the slimy body begins to slowly close as it quietly digests the mushroom. A thudding <clears throat> impact shakes the mausoleum door, showering dust across the threshold. With a distressed gurgle, the oozling <laughs> scoots backward, clutching its bone shank protectively. 
there's another heavy thud and then the door bursts open and Diamond, you emerge coughing through a cloud of old dust and cobwebs. <laughs> You're in a graveyard somewhere. Pretty evident. <clears throat> kind of twisty, mostly barren trees around. And probably about 15 feet away, you hear a... Oh, gross. Oh, and there's, a, a, like, it's about 12 to 18 inches tall, and it's got a jagged chunk of a femur, and it looks injured, and it's just kind of squatted down. You'd say staring at you, but all it has is, like, half of the top half of a skull floating in more or less the upper regions of the slime pile. No eyeballs, but it does. You do seem to have its attention. <laughs> uh, do I see the rest of the group? You do not. Okay. She uh, she goes looking for them. Okay. I'm gonna leave this one alone. It's not bothering. Give me a perception check. <laughs> Hey. Okay. You take a few steps out and you hear the clash of arms. Something is in combat probably a couple hundred yards away. And you can pretty easily pick out the direction there. You continue that following the sound. And you also notice that the little oozling is trailing behind you by about 20 feet. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Oh. <laughs> it blows an acid bubble at you. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> uh. I can't pick you up. I know something bad's gonna happen if I pick you up. So you could just follow me home. Be <laughs> <laughs> Diamond's gonna be so upset in a minute. <laughs> no, no, I really want to keep one. <laughs> me too. You're adorable. All right. It really it doesn't, but I do. Five, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes pass, and eventually, those sounds have faded, but you're still heading that direction and you can hear voices now. And just as the rest of you finish your conversation with Virshana, there's a rustle in the under, in the, the hedge nearby and Diamond sort of pushes through a small gap in the plant materials. And you're all back together in the same place. Diamond, you see they've got uh, several burlap sacks with stuff in them. Some people, Torvald's there. He's got a couple halberds sort of bound in a bundle over his shoulders that he's just sort of draping his arms over. There's a tallish human that you don't recognize um, who's simply standing off to one side with the very large sword slung over his shoulder and uh he's carrying a maul a two-handed maul in the other hand just kind of loosely who's just sort of he's got eyes locked with Koroshana right now yeah, they're staring they're yep. just staring at each other hmm? also human <laughs> looks like a human hmm? oh, yeah look like humans kind of been ish human adjacent human adjacent yep yep Oh, hi, They're only not human on the inside. <laughs> oh, hi, Diamond. Oh, no, look, look out behind you. Eldritch Blast of the Usling. No! Uh, the Usling has not come out right, never mind in, into I... line of sight. Never yet. mind then. All right. He's my little squishy. He's my squishy, and I love him. He's <laughs> going to die. Welcome. Oh, hi, Diamond. How'd you get here? Oh, you know, patron sent me Also, thing. what's that? I say, pointing at the thing in your chest. That's my arcane focus. Don't worry about it. That's not true. Okay, so I was messing with the crystal earlier. <laughs> and um, and um, a patient popped up and he said some things and he's just like, do the thing. I didn't know what thing he meant. So I 
did the thing that I did the first time I stole the crystal and it uh or you broke the pillar I, yeah but this time I think the crystal broke me um did you remove the pedals the the, the part of the pedestal that was still attached to it because like it was still it was still like attached I to the I don't think that matters anymore really yeah, yeah I think you know, that ship has sailed <laughs> it's it's now inside Just, her like that ship pun boat <laughs> <laughs> Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, we'll work on your nautical skills first, and then you can talk about your ship puns. Uh, so it certainly um, was a ship pun. Uh, Don't you start? I hope we got a lot out of that message because I think I accidentally absorbed the recorder. I walk up to Diamond. I produce flame in my in my free hand, and I see if I, I can. I, I immediately summon Thaw. I'm like, no, 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 no. I no see magic if on me. I Don't see it. if I, it's not touching you. I see if I can angle it so that light will shine through the crystal the same way we did it to get the message, and see if it plays inside her. I mean, through would be difficult right now because yes. about a sliver of it <laughs> is still visible, and that is covered by skin. I'm just. Just it's just close happens. enough to the surface that you can see it underneath there. I'm just seeing if anything happens. Did Nothing it happens. hurt? Yeah. I, I don't know if it was just the impact or whatever the magic that melded them together was. Um, I feel a little heavier, which is weird because I'm already pretty heavy. So like, I mean, you did just get a big fucking rock stuck in your chest, so... I am a big fucking rock. Yeah, but this is also another one. Like it is added mass. Normal equals... when, uh, for example, a human gets a haircut to feel a difference in your weight. Hopefully, you'll adjust with time. It's not so much the matter that's the issue, not the weight. It's more um, the magic bit. Because now it's in, it's in me, so I don't know what's. We'll explore that when it when it might come up later. What are we doing? Who are these people? I know it's Thorvald. Hi, what Thorvald. I, if I stick a candle Thorvald, in, but it sorry. gets mispronounced a lot. If I put a candle behind your head, will the message come out your mouth? Uh, yeah, a message does come out. Please don't put a candle behind my head. <laughs> what the, the fuck was that? <laughs> Nope. And you glance down, and there is a very familiar, slightly less than the last time you saw it, injured oozling peeking out from behind Diamond's leg. Elders Blast. Oh, God. It, <laughs> it followed you. Roll me an attack. No! I block him. 19. <laughs> no! My baby! <laughs> make make, her, make her, uh, both of you roll initiative, then. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, my initiative is terrible. Oh, shit. I didn't, Whoa. I don't have a thing. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, Diamond, are you attempting to interpose yourself? Yeah. Okay. So you take the shot. I'll say you can have the damage against the oozling if you take it yourself. I will take it. All right. So you both suffer six damage as this Eldritch Blast kind of ricochets off between the two of you. No, uh, Diamond, look out. It's dangerous. You're dangerous. Yes, I am. So is it. They spewed acid at us. They spit acid and kill people. It that one. Uh, at me. That one seems a lot less um, aggressive than most of its kin, though. I think that's the one that I scared with my raven. <laughs> it's looking pretty racked up right now. <laughs> Hello, I am t attempting to communicate it with, with it because I tried <laughs> with the mimic. Who knows? I'm gonna try it. Okay, let what me happened? try. So I want to see I wanna, something. Okay. I want to share, <laughs> share ownership of this oozling with you, please. That'd be great. Yeah, that's enough. <gasps> it turns toward you. Uh huh. There's no response, but it's looking at you, Aurelia. I mean, you think. Like the, 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 skull the, is the ooze of the slime, the, the exterior body hasn't changed, but the skull on the inside just went. <laughs> Whoa. The empty eye sockets are now pointed your direction. I also want to point Whoa. out that it does I have a that human loud. skull inside it. Um, I think it 
do, do you have a name? Hello, my my name is Aurelia. There's nice a pause to- and then it <laughs> blows an acid bubble at you. Just a little erupt one. Doesn't like actually spray acid uh-huh, in uh-huh. an aggressive manner the way the ones previously did, but okay. yeah. Just right about where you assume the mouth would be if this skull had a lower jaw. There's just a little blurp. Oh, no. We could name it Bubbles. I like that a lot. Why why are you naming it? (laughs) Because it's cute? Because I think it's sentient. It understands me at least. So were the ones that vomited acid on us. But, and so, it's not hostile. It's not actively hostile right now. We can see. That is kind of weird. It I is. jumped out and definitely scared it, and it didn't do anything. Except okay. Is it, there, there's the, the fun thing about sentience is it allows the freedom of choice. Yes. Are we talking about sentience? Uh, or, are we talking about sentience or sapience? Because those are two different things. Seven Don't you start with me. <laughs> instead of the little little it's, as a little oozling, it's just like stick with me, bubbles. I'll keep you safe. Can you understand us without the talking in our minds, or the skull is now kind of swiveling <clears throat> around and l- regarding the various larger two-legged things that are nearby. At can that I point, can uh, I make an insight check that we are keeping this. <laughs> bubbles? I can make an insight check on bubbles after Jeremy sure. sees what Korishan is doing. At that point, having completely not paid attention to any of this, because I imagine there's just two people still staring at each other. Up right. Up. Having heard what, what, what uh, can you understand if we're not talking to your mind? Just instinctually. And I'm sorry, I don't even know which of you two said it. Aurelia. <laughs> okay, of course I can in your head. Yes, I I know that part. I'm I'm talking to our new friend here. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> and Korishana, you turn around to see Aurelia sort of staring <laughs> at this oozling who's kind of just hunkered down close to Diamond. Holding its little bone shank. We are keeping this. Yes. I think Diamond wants to, and it doesn't seem to be doing any harm. Um, uh, It shouldn't have been advantage. I had just an 11 insight. I want to make sure that it... it... Do I know if Uslings are technically undead? Uh, You can give me a religion check. I... Poof jinx into the pocket dimension just in case. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aurelia, you were trying to determine what about it again? Um, basically, if it's dangerous, I, I, I don't know what this thing is. I know the other it's, ones attacked us, but this one seems fairly chill. This one is not distributing or dis- displaying any of the. Ag- overtly aggressive behavior the other ones you had encountered had. Okay. No, it seems it seems all right, and Diamond wants to keep it, um, and it's... It might be useful. It's kind of cute. Yeah. Major, it might be undead, it might be an aberration, it might be a combination. You haven't encountered these before today, and you haven't really heard any stories about them previously, but it definitely has that sort of feel to it. As I, as I look behind where it came from, does it look like it's sort of acid melted everything it's walked across? Um, no. The... Like, you, you can see where it's sort of come through the bushes and over the grass. There's a faint little bit of slime left behind, not like a snail trail or anything like that. And where it's touched, if it's organic material, there's some light corrosion, but it's not like there's a trail of death in this thing's wake or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, wait, uh, yeah, Diamond's gonna- I'm dead. I... Oh, this is stupid. Diamond's gonna touch it. Diamond's gonna touch it. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you reach how how do you how do you touch it mm-hmm. like i crouch down like okay like, i imagine like like you do a cat you crouch down you put your hand out see what it does <laughs> and then and then slowly touch it <laughs> slowly touch where i think its head is so you reach out and you sort of place your hand it's very cool mm-hmm. and there's like a thick kind of surface tension to the slime Mm -hmm. and it immediately leaps back and sort of sticks out its little bone shank (laughs) no she wasn't she wasn't trying to harm you she's saying hello (laughs) that's okay and then it slowly sort of sinks a little lower to the ground a bit and sort of tucks the the shank up against its body. Yeah, I keep my hand out. And then shoves the shank into its body. Mm-hmm. And the two little pseudopods just come out and one of them reaches out and sort of touches your finger and then jerks back. Horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> All right, let's go find a tomb. <laughs> anyway, um, so, so yes, that to answer your question, more... Diamond, this is in keeping with our purposes here. Vershana kind of injects into the conversation. So I will I will inform Diamond very quickly. This is Vershana. Uh, they're related um, to Korashana, and apparently we are going to help both of them find the tomb of their ancestor, Yurnashana the Elder, which is here. And we've agreed to this. And maybe that this and is might... absolutely hilarious because since uh, since Cora has no idea <laughs> that yes. really that really did that. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Diamond proceeds to get almost the exact same thing. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is what happens when you speak in people's and, heads and can only speak to one person. And, and yeah. because the two of them said that telepathically, Heaton begins to inform no, Diamond. <laughs> wow. Heaton begins I, talking. Yeah. Do I ever get an like, answer to my... I have it. Yeah, he, he answered you, yeah. Aaron. Yeah. Could, okay. Yeah, Ma- Mage's perception, Mage's never interacted with these things. Could be undead, could be aberration, could be a combination of the two. Uh, I'll try it anyways. That's I'll, terrible. um walk over to it and actually use my healing light ability. Um, because that one can be done from a distance. Um, you don't I feel have like to. Diamond might freak out if I just go over and tap it. If it's not undead, it regains 2d6 hit points. Otherwise it kills it. <laughs> no, it, it, negative <laughs> healing is not a thing in 5e. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, because thirteenth age it is. Yep. Um, you see at, at least a couple of the gashes on the exterior slowly start to close. Not as fast as you would have thought, mm-hmm. yeah. but it seems to have resonated at least somewhat with your healing capacity. Get an ooze pit. Go on, get an ooze pit. Gotta get a tank. Gotta get food. Gotta get. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, sorry. No. Um, yeah, no, what, once uh, once uh, he starts to explain, he stops saying, like, I've got this. Oh, you guys should really, like, do, put your hand to your head or something so we know you're talking in your brain. <laughs> Like, yeah, give us some sort of clue. That would seem silly. Diamond but totally fell on her I butt and just I like, can. ow. It would, then it would be different depending on who you were talking to. If you did that, then you wouldn't know who was being talked to. Who... You should. Okay, we so still should don't talk, know who's being talked to. You should put one hand on your head and point at the person you're talking to so we know you're telepathically talking to them. So I will give some indication. <laughs> if I don't watch you, then I'm talking to them. This is, this, uh, this is... Don't do that. <laughs> Hmm. I suppose it's sort of hard to explain. I look back at at at, at Roshana. <clears throat> Sibling? 
would probably be the best term. Uh, yes, sibling, but sort of also. Yes, yes. Extended family. Closer than that, but sibling Closer is probably that. probably the best. This is the best family. explanation would probably be confusing. Eh. I've probably you know heard more we're confusing weird. stuff. You you know where we are going, where this tomb is. Oh. And From what uh, information I have been able to gather, uh, we are looking for Mausoleum Four Six Two One. Oh, and uh, in case they didn't tell you via tele telepathy, the thing that is causing all the undead to stir and rise might might be related to the fey antiquities that we're looking for. So keep an eye out for a mask. It looks like it might be raising undead. Also, it's hungry. <laughs> and he, he points at the oozling there. He points at Bubbles. Aww. Now I'm just imagining a mini version. Anyway. Uh... Uh, hmm. I wonder if I still have old scones from three days ago in my pocket. Not for you, just, Cole. Just, <laughs> I already, I already owe me a survival check. <laughs> what exactly does an ooze eat? I throw one of the imp tails at it. <laughs> well, you know, oh. us. It engulfs it and dissolves it, seemingly with no ill effects. I think they eat anything. You only get the one. Material? I don't know. That's Nikki. I rolled a 12. 12? Sure, you've got a couple of spare scones in your pockets somewhere. Yeah. Just like like crumbly bits and she like like hmm, she like goes to toss them on the ground and just sprinkles them on top. <laughs> so they like hit, hit the yeah. crown of the yeah. head with that yeah. thin layer of slime <laughs> and it just sort of dissolves into it. Yeah. Not too and much the, at and once. The thing gives a little jiggle. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Vershana, feel free to lead the way. Follow me then. And Vershana heads off uh, to the east, I believe we had said. Right. Uh, as, you, as you guys proceed, there's very little evidence of roaming undead in these areas. Cole, you're sending somebody out to scout? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my raven. I was just going to have it fly like the hundred feet in front of us, and then uh, just turn back um, if it finds undead on our path. As you go, yeah, the the raven loops out ahead, keeping an eye, and you simply proceed without it having come back to warn you of anything. Occasionally, you'll hear a shout or the clash of metal somewhere fairly far in the distance probably the undead are still roaming the grounds and there's definitely people out there but you guys path seems to have either been previously cleared or simply not repopulated yet something along those lines the mist thickens and every so often you have to pause and walk up to a mausoleum but the the number engraved on the door doesn't match the first few times you check. Eventually the, the path stops and there's simply like a, a little circular courtyard with a number of passages leading off. <clears throat> Vershana goes down one of these and then seeing now 4621 carved over an open archway calls everybody along. I believe we have found our destination. Yes. Bubble's still following me? Yep. Yeah. You fed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mine now! <laughs> the air wafting through the tall arch smells cold and stale, but with less of the damp mustiness you might have expected. There's carved marble vines that twist around the frame of the entrance, their topmost creepers flanking the number that's chiseled deep into the stone overhead. And Virshana pauses just inside the door to pull out a torch, light it, and hold it aloft, revealing three passages 
to the interior. One is a set of stairs going up. The other two to the right and the left seem to go down and curve. Well, she lies somewhere in here. Very well. Have, have I ever seen a tomb with construction like this? Is there anything that indicates which path might lead to her? Would uh, a high, if this person is a high ranking person, would they be buried up or down? Can I get any sort of sense Give of that from my Give me a history background? check. Okay. 10. 10. Can't roll for shit. <laughs> um, and remind me of your uh, your archaeological background thing. Yeah. Uh, um, purpose and that sort of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it gives me here. Let me put it in the thing. Original purpose and determine its builders, whether these, um, et cetera, mon and monetary value. So it doesn't tell okay. me anything specific uh, about that. So as far as construction goes, obviously this is a mausoleum. You're expecting to find a not insignificant number of dead bodies inside. Mm -hmm. uh, m construction looks to be a not uh, not standard, but kind of interesting melding of dwarven and human architecture, primarily. Um, which those are two of the primary uh, demographics represented in the Revered Order of Stonesmiths, who do most of the construction across uh, the face of Conflux. Okay. Um, your history tells you that generally, and especially given that this is a classical crypt word graveyard, if the deceased in question were more on the paylor side of things, probably up. If they are more on the Raven Queen side of things, who tends to have more followers or be at least more revered in terms of the funerary operations of most of the culture, probably below. Okay. Do you know anything about your, your Nishana the Elder? Which gods they might have followed or... I do not. Are you legends of the tomb. I simply know that she was one of the elder members of our family. A, a sibling who died many centuries prior to my birth. And that she had unique perceptive capacity. Very skilled, very highly regarded amongst those she knew, interacted with, and spoke to. She was an oracle. And what, what is that? Sorry. Sorry, we were trying to talk at the same time. Good. I don't know. Uh, there, I don't know if 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 this is a common trait among us, but my reaction to the whole situation was perhaps not to be a follower of a particular god, so. I don't know if that would be a common trait. Well, in that case, I would suggest we take one of the two paths downward if uh, a standard funerary rite was performed, then one of the Raven Queen that he, uh, officials would be the most likely path to follow. Sounds to right good. or left. Right. Very well. Right, we go. I'll push Jinx out. 
because you never go left because the left is left hand is the hand of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> oh my it's goodness! Me, not Cora. <laughs> so, and Heaton's I like, "Don't like talk that. about my dad like that." My daddy, daddy. Torvald kind of shrugs down the uh, the halberds and sort of leans them up against the interior of the door. I suppose we can pick these up on our way out then. Yes. Unless something picks them up behind yep. us. That is disturbing. That is a risk. <laughs> but hmm, I feel having two hands free might be a bit more important. These yes. darker passages oh. we seem to be in exploring. Oh, I'm not disagreeing with you. I was just making I was just pointing that out. I will also cast Friend Vishana, I can hold the torch if you like. Hmm. Looks like you'll need both hands to wield those weapons of yours. And what? Hmm. By the way, Diamond, this is going to make a lot of noise in there. <laughs> and, yeah, and, um... Yay! I feel yes. like yes, definitely it's doing quite it loud. Yeah, Vir Virashana. Virashana. It's... It's loud. Especially in an enclosed place. Yeah, you yes, say uh, yay now, but wait until... If you're not prepared for it, I would say cover your ears before she fires. Okie dokie. Only I had some way of magically silencing. I do. Magical silence. Really, really <laughs> big or area yes. for this. Please, please completely fuck <laughs> the spell cast <laughs> by dropping a silence spell around them. Over the gun. <laughs> silence spell is a 20 range. foot radius. Oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, in the long term, we could think about trying to modify the gun to work with the spell silence, but not right now. <laughs> I don't have the silence spell. So. I do like the idea, because it would not be the first time I had a character horribly murdered because a member of my party decided to cast silence. <laughs> and then maintained it. <laughs> yes. Yep. Oh, I was there for that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know, Varen. <laughs> Sorry. That was hilarious. No, it was great. That. I loved it. So you guys proceed down the right-hand pathway. Yep. The stairs make a full <clears throat> two revolutions before emerging into an underground chamber where Torvald's now holding the torch and Mage's light cantrip illuminate a chamber. It's probably about 20 feet by 30 feet. And an immense number of carvings on the walls, all with raven iconography. There's a few small stone benches set, a couple of sconces in the wall that have the drippings of very old and cold wax from where candles have been burned previously. There's a small edifice towards the, the front with a stone uh, platform bare uh, and just a, a large carved winged blank mask icon of the Lady of the Dead. Looks to be some sort of shrine room or other. <clears throat> with another doorway leading out towards another curving set of stairs that seems to lead down to the next level. Well, seems we're on the right track if we're looking for dead things. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. Bloop. Anyone know if there's any traps in these sort of places? Always good to look for traps. So oh, that would seem quite reasonable. I, 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 I will point out that before anybody said anything about traps, I did go bloop. Right. And was me <laughs> walking forward. Because <laughs> wisdom is not Cora's high point. Oh, God. So Cora, I'm staying back. <laughs> you walk down the stairs. They make. Oh, wisdom actually isn't bad. Still walking forward. <laughs> right. Wisdom isn't the... one of Jeremy's strong points. <laughs> hey! These oh. make a full. Mean. These make a full second round. Do you have dark vision or a light source with you? Uh, I believe I have dark vision, uh, but I may not. 
hold on just a second. <laughs> Let me check my character sheet. If Cora was in the front, she would. I would have given the light spell. I would cast the light spell on her or something there if she needed it. Um, Star so. don't have. Kalistar do not have dark vision. No, no. I was. Ch I'm checking to see if. Oh yeah, uh, if invocation. invocation. Yeah. Mm. Right. Uh, yeah, if you have um, Devil's Sight or whatever it's called, but no. otherwise the light spell is on you. No, they do not. Okay, so you you've got a light spell on you, so you're fine. Yep. So you start walking down the stairs. These seem to only make about one revolution before you get down to the to the level below. They're, they're okay. a little little bit broader of a of a round. It is highly possible there are traps to prevent grave robbers. Yes, as Cora leaves. <laughs> Probably go catch up to her and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll okay. just... So Cora, you come down and are now viewing the next chamber. You're coming in from this area. Okay. Hold on, let me get back on the on uh, okay. And there's a number of large sarcophagi around. I see that. And give me a perception check. All righty. Uh... Oh, advantage. Twelve. Okay. Let me see here. Okay, that was exactly what you needed. Wonderful. So you step in and to your die, light right? casts over these areas, throwing deep dark shadows on the opposite side of these uh, tombs and stone coffins. And three figures <laughs> turn to see you. <laughs> Two and similar to the ones that you confronted on the surface, those tieflings with the uh, the halberds, and one that looks a little more classically human skeleton that draws a pair of blades, or what you assume are blades. The hilts seem solid enough, but beyond that is simply this wavering, bluish, frosty-looking spectral impression of a blade. Okay. And I'm going to need everybody to roll some initiative. Oh, God. Click <laughs> on your token and hit the initiative button. Four! Ah! Seven. What? Oh, God. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> this is really bad. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, no. Two of us got natural ones on initiative, so this is going it's well. fine. Having the cleric go last is usually a good thing. I'm still going after you because my... Uh, actually, no, we had the same dexterity modifier of 11. Yeah, I think we had the same dexterity last time this happened. Um, no. But I've got a tiebreaker in there, so it currently sorts me as first. Okay. So, damn so, fiat. <laughs> these guys go... Basically, everybody who's currently present goes, and that's when everybody else who will be notified from the noise, I assume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So the decrepit knights are first. They are on the other side, so they will actually have to spend their entire turn getting up to the door to you, okay. uh, Koroshana. The odd one that you have not seen. Right. Makes a gesture towards one of its hands. That's really not good. <laughs> and impenetrable darkness just erupts out from it. You can't see it at all. Shit. <laughs> the darkness stops about a foot and a half away from your nose and then moves to engulf you. Dead. It's your turn. What? You are surrounded in complete darkness and can't see shit. Mm -hmm. uh, 
before I got completely surrounded by darkness, did it look like it was filling the room? Um, no, it looked like it was more centered on whatever this undead sword wielding thing was. All right. So. Uh, do, 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 do. I feel like fear is not going to help much in this situation. Um, do, 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 do. All of my things require sight. Um, All right, here's the point that I've been waiting for. Um, I am telling uh, 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 for my action. Um, yes, uh, I am taking the attack action. Okay. To have Chethal go up to it invisibly. Okay. And attack it. All right. Um, He'll be at disadvantage. Okay. All right. That's a hit. For seven piercing and four poison damage. Okay. And were you having him attack the one that cast the darkness? Yes. Or? Okay. Yes. All right. DC 10. Uh, it does not say what the DC is on that poison. It just says it's, un it's undead. It's immune to poison. So okay. And well, Shethal gets the shit knocked out of him <laughs> <laughs> because I only used my action for that. <laughs> you did. I am using my movement to back up out of the. <laughs> I just threw my familiar to the wolves and backed yes, away. I mean, that's what they're there for. <laughs> All right. So the decrepit knights both get opportunity attacks on you, okay. as does the skeletal blade master. Okay. Decrepit knights can't see in the dark, so they're at disadvantage. That's good. An eight misses you, I assume. Yes. A natural one hits the... Let's see. Hmm. Excellent. It's the blade master. It's <laughs> <laughs> another save. Oh, good. Hell yeah. Uh, much what happens so to anybody that like casts dark. <laughs> uh, he needs to make a dexterity save, which he fails. So oh, you hear, God. so you hear a swoosh, and then a second swoosh, and a clang, and a huge clatter. <laughs> As you are just hauling ass back up these stairs. Yep. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I love it when physical comedy happens where literally nobody can see it. I mean. Uh, but he's get, still going to make his attack now at disadvantage. No, just as standard because he's in darkness, but he can see. <clears throat> yeah, so the disadvantage and the advantage counteract each other. A 21 hits you, I assume. Yes, a 21 okay. definitely hits All right, so you take 11 slashing damage. Okay. And you are running your ass off. Congratulations. Okay, good. There's no end X damage. Yeah. Uh, no, that was, that, was, that was everything. Guys All right, fighting. Cole, your turn. We're fighting so yeah, stages. everybody hears just like a, an entire wagon of scrap metal throw itself at Korashana where they walk. <laughs> previously sounds like a fight it does yeah. sound a bit like a fight cole but i already said that i was gonna go forward Sorry. to look for traps and mm -hmm. before Shana found any but i think she may have found some uh, <laughs> found so, the traps yeah i will move forward my 30 feet to catch up and then okay so you uh, move about 20 feet and it's just darkness in front of you do you have devil's sight i don't have devil's sight just regular old dark vision you can't see shit the fuck is that, Cora? Did you 
trip on something <laughs> make a trap go off no skeletal creature oh cool with shadow abilities hello so, hi <laughs> I'll, I'll back up my last 10 feet and then just why not fire blindly into the darkness <laughs> towards whatever you can hear yeah, come I'll on just... somebody has to say it i attack the darkness thank you <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't going to do it so <laughs> all right make an attack with disadvantage then cult mm. 15 15 does not hit anything unfortunately Okay. So you, you hear the crossbow bolt just skitter off of the stones below. Doesn't sound like you hit anything. Okay. Uh, can't really do anything as a bonus action. Uh, I can, but I'm not in a pinch yet. So, all right. Yeah, that's me. Okay. Uh, that means it's Wotan's turn. All right. So... I don't have devil sight either. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, and I don't remember what spells I had active last time if I still had my rings up. I think you may have had one ring left. I think you had one ring left, yes. Okay. And for some reason, the roll 20 window has frozen. That's lovely. Because for... you need it not to. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, unable to do anything while roll 20 is reloading. Um, I can roll it for you. What do you want to yeah. do? Um, I think he's mostly just going to can he make out the positions of the physical comedy going on? Give me a perception. Uh, well, I'll roll a perception check. Yeah, that. I was say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, diff not really. You rolled a nine. Um, of course I did. You can hear noise down there. Any attack you'll make will definitely be a disadvantage, though. I was just trying to see if I could tell where they were at enough to make an attack. You can give it a try. Okay, yeah, I will try and fire my Eldritch Blast at them while I'm trying to get this page to reload. Okay. With an 18, you do hit something. Hey. And I, it looks like I actually have control again. Okay, here we go. All right, cool. Uh, uh, you hit the Blade Master, actually. Yay! For five force damage. Five force Minim damage. Minimum damage. Minimum damage, which kind of makes sense considering the situation, but still, it's not nothing. All right. At which point, it's their turn. So as you guys are standing there, you see two skeletons erupt out of the darkness, swinging halberds at you in surprisingly confined spaces, but they're going for more of a stabbing sweep than a, than a full-on haymaker with these pole arms. And one for Cole, one for Wotan, since you guys are closest. Ah, more halberds. Oops, all halberds. Cole, does a 17 hit you? Yep. All right. You take five slashing damage, and I need you to make a deck save. God damn it. The second... The second decrepit night. Okay, so you go down. Uh, you're on your ass. Um, the, the other, the other one, one rolls another natural one, <laughs> and it's his friend. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> this is why you shouldn't use halberds in enclosed spaces. This is probably why you shouldldn't use Halberds in close space. This is this particular person was a guard in life too. <laughs> and he was the worst guard ever. so he was executed and, the, and they were like, maybe he'll be better when he doesn't have to be in control of his own balance. <laughs> I am willing to bet money that this guy's name was Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Gary the Tiefling. No. Um, and then the darkness moves up the stairs and engulfs darkness. both of you. Um, you're each getting an attack from the Skeletal Blade Master. Since he can see in the dark, he's at advantage. Uh, Cole, does an 11 hit you? No. 
Uh, 24 hits Woten for only six damage. Slashing. I take six points of damage. You take six points of slashing damage. And it's Diamond's turn. Woo! Everything's uh, in the dark. Oh, everything's in the dark? Okay. If you uh, go if you go down there, all you'll see is dark. Uh, uh, oh. Where's Bubbles? Where's Bubbles? Bubbles is just kind of burbling his way around the Raven Queen shrine upstairs. Perfect. Good. Excellent. Didn't want to get into combat. Um... Diamond is uh Woten and um Cole are in the darkness, right? Uh yes. Cora Shauna is just on the edge. Yep. Okay. Oh glory. Uh-huh. Uh, mm, Diamond's gonna stand next to Cora Shauna and shoot into the darkness. Okay. <laughs> this cannot Disadvantage. go yep. wrong. I'm glad I'm prone now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey! hey. All <laughs> right. You hit something that is actually worth being hit. Let's see. Uh, you oh. hit... You, one, hit, you well, hit the Blade Master. <laughs> for one point of damage. For one point of force damage. All right. Anything on your bonus action? did something. Um, can I... Uh, uh, I don't have Armor of Shadows up. Can I do that as a bonus action? Except mm -hmm. action. It's an action. I was going to say, I think Armor of Shadows is an action. You cast the Mage Armor spell, so it takes an action yeah. to cast. Mm -hmm. I move away from the darkness. Okay. Oh, I can, Cora, you're on your own. Move away. All right. So you're backing up. And Aurelia, it's your turn. Yep. I walk carefully down, and I do have double sight. You can see Do everything. Oh, so Cole hey. is on his ass. Woten is glance, kind of jerking his head side to side, trying to catch where things position are by sound. Uh, Kurashana and Diamond are sort of working their way back up the stairs, and there are two halberd wielders and a rather impressive-looking human-sized uh, skeleton with glowing blue blades in each hand standing over Cole. Yep, yeah. Who looks that, like that he's going to be on the receiving end of something very, very bad if he can't get up on his feet. Mm. Yep, uh -huh. that that, covers your ears. <laughs> that looks very bad. Um, I step into the darkness and fire then. Okay. Uh, so... I heard where that came from. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, you're not going to hear anything else. Woo! 22. That's a hit. I've been acclimating to it. 12 uh, piercing. Okay. Uh, which one were you attacking? Uh, uh, glowy eyes. Creepy dude. The, glowy the blade, glowy blood. blade man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. All the, the, right. The scariest looking one. The scariest looking one. Okay. Yep. Boom. So takes a huge chunk just out of his rib cage and there's bone fragments that scatter behind there. You found a gap in his studded leather and yeah, it's just a nice chunk of bone is gone now. You've yep. got a little bit of a move left uh, and bonus action if you need it. <laughs> um, well, I don't think my hex will work on these things because it didn't work on the last ones. So no one else can see. Um, I step forward. <laughs> okay. That's Are you it. trying to interpose yourself between people or what? Damn it, Cole, you idiot. Yes. <laughs> she said okay. Over it. Yeah, I mind. say that. <laughs> Damn it, Cole, move. All right. <laughs> Just your mop, mop. <laughs> Cora, you're up. Fuck, that was loud. It was loud. Yeah. People's ears are ringing. Some of your drums might be burst. Go. Uh. All right, I have a question. Okay. 
it does not say anywhere in the ability that I have to know exactly what the fuck my familiar situation. I don't have to be able to see anything. No. Anything like that. I just have to say kill. Yeah. Pretty much. I mean, it's my familiar, so I have to specify what to kill and not like right, Aurelia. You're right. You say kill. <laughs> Shethal leaps for your throat. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> my chance. Um, <laughs> kill the swords. Is what you ordered. Uh, All right. This is... Go ahead and make an attack at disadvantage. Yep. Uh... Kill the sword skeleton. Uh, do I need to talk over there? We go. Why does it still have devil's sight? Fifteen. All right, he makes an attempt, but the armor is thick enough that his claws do not make it through. Cora believes that Shethal did that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it did or not, that's what they believe. So cynical. All right. And this is when... This is when... <laughs> this is when you hear... Into the fray! Oh, no. And I spend my movement action to press up against the side of the hall. <laughs> to the staircase. <laughs> As Torvald goes cha charging headlong down the stairs. Oh boy. Because that's his sort of thing. Bless him. Does he have devil sight? No, no, no he's not <laughs> an idiot. <laughs> oh boy. He has courage. I have courage sight. <laughs> so he goes in. Fuck, it's dark in here. <laughs> and you hear a rapier blade scrape off of a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, it's dark. <laughs> well, at least he told the people coming next what's going on. Darkness! <laughs> Darkness! Virshana sighs, listens for a moment, and then also actually charges down. I wonder if Virshana and... could use telepathy to find out where the creature is. Not telepathy really. Telepathy is not echolocation. <laughs> Not really how. No, but some forms of telepathy let you know where the person you're talking to is. All right. Like usually like, only if they respond, and I don't think the skeleton's going to respond. Like aboleths, for instance. Yeah, it's, if they if, <laughs> yeah. if they respond, and I don't think the yeah, skeleton's going to respond. Principle, sure. <laughs> and with the mall out, you hear just a crunch. And something clatter to the ground. It's Cole. I'm dead, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's Captain <laughs> Critical. It's Captain Critical Misses over here. Oh, we should have left him alive. <laughs> who just he was got doing his very whole, well at, at... just got his whole collarbone staved in. He was doing Old so well at killing the, the... them for us, though. Flings out of the darkness. Yep. <laughs> okay. So he's dead. All right. And that brings us to Maja. Hmm. Well, probably startled out by those out of whatever natural one fugue I was in by the screaming. Um, <laughs> I will head downstairs. So at this point, Cora's is still on the edge of the darkness, right? Uh, yes. And basically everyone else aside from Aurelia and Cora is inside of it. Or, no, Diamond. Aurelia is in the dark. Aurelia is in the dark. Aurelia, yeah, Diamond, yep. Heaton, you, and Cora are the four okay. that are on the outside. And Bubbles. Uh, I think Cora's the one of that group that's injured, correct? Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Most right. significantly, yes. So I'll move down to where Cora is, um, cast Cure Wounds, um, you get 17 hit points back. Oh, good. That's That, by the way, if I had zero hit points, would bring me to full. <laughs> At oh, third level. 
yeah. <laughs> Look, I have a healing modifier and it's kind of the only thing I can do. Um, I'm not gonna risk like anything that might so I'm just going to use the rest of my action, whatever's left of it, to move mm -hmm. back up the stairs. Okay. Um, try and... So, so you're you're mercying your way back out of there. Yeah, yeah. To the extent <laughs> that I can, I realize right. that I don't have that much movement, but... Right. No, you, you, have pl you have plenty to get down, deliver, and then pull I a little really bit of a retreat. I don't know what's happening in the darkness. Sorry, Cole. All right, oh, Heaton, right. your turn. So I choose to believe that Heaton didn't get uh, didn't go last because he rolled a natural one, but instead went last because he just wanted to be the last one to move. Um, so after everyone else has done everything, how far away am I from this darkness? Uh, I mean, you can see the edge of it from where you're at. Can I aim into it from where I'm at, or would I have to get closer? You would have to get closer around the curve of the stairs to aim into it. I get so I get closer to the darkness. Okay. I stick my cane inside the darkness and just call out duck as I fire an eldritch blast blindly. <laughs> Attack with disadvantage. The skeleton's gonna duck. <laughs> Everybody <it> ducks. <laughs> I like ducks. 19? Hey, okay. you're rolling really well. I'm just you hit something. Let's see. It's me. For nine points of force damage. Uh, once again, the Blade Master is on the receiving end of the damage. Please tell me that kills him and the darkness lifts, or it at least causes him to <laughs> drop concentration. <laughs> nope. Okay. Because that would be funny. Duck. But it doesn't. But it does an amount of damage. Uh, I will, on the switch. I will then walk back up the stairs. All right, Cole, you are on your ass in the dark. Yep, I am I also spooked, so I'm gonna shift uh, as a bonus action. I'll get my five temporary hit points. Okay. Uh, I'll get up on my feet, and right. then I'm. I see to... this. What do you turn into? Uh, he looks more ursine in appearance. Fascinating. Bear boy. Uh, yep, bear, bear boy. Bear. bear. Not not where. Not where. Uh, not where. Bear. Uh, and then I'm just gonna take the dodge action because I don't know where the fuck anything is in here. <laughs> I mean, I'm you can gonna... hear it. It's pretty much right on top of you. You're sure, but you can't tell which direction. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna listen for the whoosh of lanes <laughs> and hope that they don't good. hit me. All right, Wotan, you're up. Where bear? There bear. All right. Um. This is what I get for not having any oh. offensive spells except for Ring Strike. Yeah, same. I have Spiritual Weapon. <laughs> That's uh, it. That's what cantrips are for. Have I... I'll specifically say that you can see. <laughs> um, do I have the sense of that skeleton's getting pummeled by everyone's attacks? Um, you're not, you're, you're hearing noises. There's definitely things being hit and getting hit, but hard to tell where and what and hey. who. I will attempt to fire again. All right. Disadvantage on the attack there. Well, if the darkness just stays, even if the guy hey, dies, miss. end up fighting each other. Yep. So yeah, the Eldritch Blast sails down and we'll see what happens. All right. Guy with the halberd is going. No, we won't see what happens. That's the whole point. <laughs> I mean, you'll see what happens eventually, hopefully. Um, guy with the halberd is going to attack Cole. He's at disadvantage for that because of dodging and darkness and other things. <laughs> That's a six. Pretty sure not. But nope. Um, so, yeah, Cole, you hear that grip, shift, creak, and beginnings of a little bit of a scrape of a blade along the wall and you just slide as low as you can. Something whistles past your temple, but doesn't actually make contact. Meanwhile, Wotan is going to be on the receiving end of one attack. 
Uh, 20, I assume, hits you for nine slashing damage, Woten. Okay. And Korashana. Yeah. A dagger comes spinning out of the darkness directly towards you. But a 10 misses you, I'm assuming. Uh, yes. Okay. So this blue-bladed dagger sails directly past your temple and just embeds itself up to the hilt into the stone wall. At a slight angle, you can see that vaporous blue blade has just sunk directly in to this solid stone, and it was just the actual contact of the metal hilt to the wall that finally stopped its progress. Right. So that's a little creepy. Taken that. And it's Diamond's turn. Uh, Diamond's going to cast Armor of Shadows on herself, stand next to Korshana, hold out Thaw, and wait. Okay. See, this is like, Korra's like, you don't cast it on yourself when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little preoccupied earlier, and then I met Bubbles, and then we got in here. It, there's, it's been a long day. Fair enough. I really, I, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I spend my life expecting to be murdered at any moment. So, so, so I'm up, up right in the face of this, this uh, blade master thing, right? I'm assuming that's yeah. what sent the the blade at at uh, Korshana. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if I attacked with my rifle right now, would I be at disadvantage because I'm would be uh, firing into melee? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, I'm going to do. Let's see, which one do I want to see? Um, let's see. Which one would probably work better? Uh, I'm gonna do, I want it away. I want it away from us. Um, Dissonant Whispers. Okay. At the Blade Master. All right. So level two, it has to make a wisdom save. Ooh, this is terrible damage. Not great. Well, it's yeah, decent. Okay. My DC is 13. All right. Wisdom save versus 13. Yes. If it succeeds, half as much damage and... It doesn't have to move. Gotcha. Um, and I have a question just for, for, for uh, words purposes. Um, this thing has been using kind of ice blue sort of magic. Is that... Does that seem similar enough to Korashana's, because I've seen Korashana's magic. Korra's magic now. looks very different from this stuff. Okay, this is different. All yeah. right. So this doesn't seem they're... to be cold based. It seems to be okay. ethereal. In okay, nature. cool. All right. So it takes full damage and has to move away yes! from you. Uh, let me see one thing on that. And in as I do this uh, in its mind, I'm going to say we are looking for your Nashana the Elder. Where is she? Just, just, to, just because. Okay. Just in case. Just, just because. Just, just in because. case it knows. I don't know. All right. And is inclined, I don't know how much this and is inclined to, to respond to the maddening whispers. Yeah. And Korashana, your turn. Yep. So I realized something. Uh huh. I have a spell that doesn't require you to see the target. Okay. So I am casting Chill Touch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I'm going to swipe blindly in the darkness with a spectral hand. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Attack rolls. Attack roll spells typically don't require that you can see them. It's just the saving throw one. <clears throat> yep. All right, so go ahead and make your range spell attack. <laughs> you swipe out into the darkness yeah, with a cold uh, spectral hand. Uh, uh. The spectral hand can't grab anything, unfortunately. 
You just put your hand out, and a larger spectral version of your hand just flies out. Well, all right. <laughs> but Torvald is going to continue his oh. attempts. <laughs> Sorry, for, for I, I don't know if it would oh. take a full action, but interact or bonus action, could I pull that knife, uh, that, that dagger out of the wall? Yes. I, I also uh, had a question. Um, give me a... You're going to say... an athletics check. Yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. I also had a question because I, I I don't know how big this room is and where we are in relation to the thing, but when I pushed it back, would I be able to push coal out of the bubble with my action? Because um, the bubble was moved, whispers was the center of the bubble. Yes. Yeah. This would just be with my movement. And bonus action um, and it has to move as far away as the speed allows so yeah mm -hmm. basically what happens is as the blade master retreats mm -hmm. the darkness travels with it yeah it moves 30 feet away and mm -hmm. you guys are now all out in the open facing down this one halberd wielding skeleton yeah that is I now, walk is now perfectly visible yeah I walk forward into the darkness. I'm going to keep You're going to chase after thing. it? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you walking as far as you can? Because that would put you directly back in melee with it again. No, no. I'm okay. just going to get on the edge of the darkness because I can see into it. Okay. Oh, whoops. It's not a disadvantage. Yeah. There we go. Oh, damn. <laughs> All right. So... Torvald whips that blade out now that he can actually see, jams it towards the neck, the spine of this uh, halberd-wielding tiefling, hits it dead center, and severely fucks it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. Who does Torvald mur murder? Uh, no, but it's not dead yet. We're going to see No, I, I mean which ally. Oh. <laughs> And... Fucks up as in damages the enemy, not fucks up yeah. the role. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Torvald critical. Okay. Torvald, Torvald hey. got a crit. Yes, Torvald did great. I, I was confused. Nah, it's all good. Torvald. Jack's use of vague language is confusing. Okay. Sorry. And Vershana just whips that maul around and sends the skull just hurtling through the air to crack pretty solidly against the... Uh, the far wall of this interior staircase. So that one's dead now, too. Because Jeremy's... fighters with bludgeoning damage against skeletons, it works. Jeremy's doing something with his hand. Yes, it's called raising it. <laughs> Jack? Or... It was a 15, was a 13 good enough? We kind of skipped past that. Yes, oh, okay, so you reach up. <laughs> Grab you know, further back in time. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Rolling that back. I've completely forgot to address that. You reach up, grab the hilt of that dagger, and it's a dagger stuck into stone. Right. So you kind of put a little English on it. Thing slides out like it was in butter. Nice. And the blade doesn't go out or anything. Okay. You've got a dagger. You're not exactly okay. just stuck, but yep, you've got a dagger. Major, your turn. Aaron. Yeah, I. Sorry, I'm just trying to do like. Oh, I don't have any spells left or abilities left. I I am kind of. <laughs> I recognize distracted. <laughs> yeah it's me okay because I'm not the kind of person who randomly fires an eldritch blast into a cloud of darkness right uh okay responsible <laughs> yes yeah that's the word consider it <laughs> It's all right. He's only he's the only person in the Safety cloud of darkness. Minded, even. No, it's me. Uh, I'm in there. 
Eh, that's your own fault. Nah. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna say not an asshole, but yeah, those work too. You can get out by running this direction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes! Perfect. <laughs> Elephant mom is. I am. Mom. I am giving people a very loud. I don't know if this is actually going to work, but a very loud audio cue to orient themselves if they are in the darkness and need to get out. Cool. Curious. Useful and intelligent. All right, and Heaton. I walk You're... back. Yep. I walk back down the stairs. Okay. See that the darkness has moved. Mm -hmm. I aim into the darkness and fire. All right. Don't Eldritch duck. Disadvantage. <laughs> An eight. <laughs> it goes in there. It hits something. Might have been rocks. Might have been the floor. Might have been the wall. Might have been Aurelia. <laughs> <laughs> and since the darkness is way over there, I'm just going to stand at the doorway by the stairs. Just lean. Okay. Yep. Yeah, no, the darkness has now receded into, and you guys can all pretty much gather in the doorway and m a little bit into the room. Cole. Uh, now that I'm back on my feet, mm -hmm. um, I really don't want to go back into that darkness, so... Bang. Eight. Eight. Ryan. Yep. Mm -hmm. It it's pretty easy to tell. Like Eldritch Blast is just it's a ball of force and it just smacks into things. You can tell when an, the difference between hitting a target and hitting a hitting the back of the the chamber with a crossbow bolt, though. Yeah, that was definitely a miss. <laughs> All right. Damn it. Uh, yeah, and I will move behind one of the sarcophagi. All right. Take, taking some cover just in case. Just in case something comes flying back out. <laughs> All right. Woten. All right. Um, things are... Sorry, I missed... Uh, things are visible again, or is darkness still everywhere? Darkness is around the only enemy that you know to still be standing. The other two skeletons have gotten killed. Yeah, okay. Um, well, we're going to see if we can't connect. Okay. Because if we can connect, I can follow it up. 13 probably misses, though. 13 is a miss, unfortunately. Yep. Mm -hmm. So there's just energy flying all over these places, but not being able to see what you're aiming at makes it very difficult. Well, Aurelia, you're the closest. <laughs> yep. Okay, two attacks against you. Mm -hmm. 17 hits. Yep. Six slashing damage. Okay. And second one is a miss. Sweet. Right. Um, and then it's going to use a bonus action to throw another dagger. At Heaton. Hmm. 19 hit you, Heaton. Oh, yeah. Nine piercing damage. <laughs> and you've got a dagger sticking out of you. And it hurts. Like more than a dagger stabbing into me would hurt? I mean, levels of dagger hurt aren't really your forte. But this dagger bit deeper than you were anticipating. Even Ow. seeing it come at you and being a little prepared for it to impact. Just... It took away my temporary hit points, but only two of my normal hit points. <laughs> All right, Diamond, your turn. Hmm. You're all muted. The, there you go. Yeah, are all the um, tiefling halberd wheelers? All the yep, they're 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 pummeled into splinters at this point. Cool. Uh, Diamond's gonna go up to one of them and uh, grab a few like random bone pieces, put them in a pocket, and. Uh, into the darkness. Okay. As as I might do. Like you do. Oh goody. A lot of eights coming out today. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Oh yeah. Something smashes into 
part of a sarcophagus, you're pretty sure. All right, Aurelia. Yep, I'm going to raise my rifle and fire. Okay. Die thing. Uh, you're at disadvantage on these because it moved up into melee with you. It did? Yep. Mm. I will take that opportunity to talk to get away from it. To take okay. Some back. I assume a 16 hits you? Yes. You suffer 16 slashing damage. Ow. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Are you unconscious? Yes. <laughs> so Aurelia goes to take a step back. Well, actually, none of you. All of you just no. hear a, sh a slicing God. sound like air ripping and something hit the ground. The darkness is still there, though. Shit. Schluck. Thud. <laughs> yeah, schluck thud. Could I use my schluck inspiration thud. to give that thing disadvantage? Is that a possibility? Student? I will let you use your inspiration. You can roll your inspiration and employ that uh, amount of reduction to its like attack. A cutting words. To like a cutting attack. words, basically. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. To the damage or to the attack? Roll? To the attack. Hmm. Okay, I will take that. That's a. Is that a d8? I think that's what we've been running. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Hey! <laughs> Does an eight hit you? No! All right. So you just oh push God. yourself just a little, right. You see that sword coming in and you Ooh. just suck your stomach in and push backwards a little faster, sort of skidding on your toes just a little bit, but you managed to get out of its range before yep. it managed to make contact with you. Fire. That was inches. And you're <laughs> thinking that could have been intestines. Um, but yeah, and now you can shoot without disadvantage. All right, I will do that. Let's see, come on. Also, how many rounds have you fired? Um, I have two, with this bullet, I have two left. Um, I have one round left in the reload. Okay. I couldn't remember where I was last time, so I figured like we had the interim, I could have made sure I had the Yeah, reload. you could you could have been reloading. Yep. yep. All right. But that a nine misses. unfortunately misses. Hmm. Damn it. Okay. All right. Korashana. Hmm. All right. Um Well, she'll touch something yet. Uh, she'll touch, get that natural one to hit a really <laughs> So am I... Okay. Who's visible and who isn't at this point? Uh, Aurelia, had you tried to make it out of the darkness? Uh, no, I was still trying to stay in it because I know... Okay. Everybody's visible except Aurelia. Yeah. And the... And the, the Blade Master, yep. yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not casting Chill Touch on anybody else. So. <laughs> uh... Chathal is actually visible as well. No. As tempting as it is. Cast Chill Touch on my familiar. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, he did fail to divert any kind of attacks. <laughs> 17. That hits. <laughs> now he can't take reactions. <laughs> Five necrotic damage and no reactions. I'm pretty sure that's uh, Shocking Grasp is the one that eliminates. Or no, reactions. yeah. Not, no, no, he uh, can't regain hit points. Can't, can't regain hit points. And, and he has disadvantage on any attacks against you. <laughs> Yep. Because yep. he is definitely undead. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on a second. But hey, there mm -hmm. is this nice little closet you can stab. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Your two melee compañeros decide to dive in there and try and fuck shit up. Mm -hmm because Torvald grabs his rapier for glory! Don't die! Don't <laughs> but he rolls an 11 because disadvantage sucks. Um, That'd be precision German engineering right now. <laughs> yes! Highly precise German engineering with that guy. And Vershana runs in to make a swipe. Misses on the first one, 
hits on the second one. <laughs> All right. And Major, it's your turn again. Nobody seems to have responded to your verbal cues. In fact, there's a surprising number of people running the opposite direction. <laughs> that is sweet of them. <laughs> and by sweet, I mean stupid. I don't say any of that a lot. Um, okay, I, I'm sort of like at the top of the staircase, but I can see down to where the people who aren't in the darkness are. Um, if you needed to see anybody who was in the room, you would have to move some, but you've got plenty of movement to get there. All right, yeah, so I'll move to a point where I probably would have a good angle if the darkness was gone mm -hmm. and hold my action for if I see any enemy young daddy things. Okay. Not in a sphere of darkness and thus less risk of hitting allies. All right. Elder's Blast specifically. Okay. Heden, you're on deck. Uh, I pull the dagger out of my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's got like a ghostly blue blade that does you can kind of see through it keeping, like it's made of mist keeping that uh i will identify that later uh and eldritch blast into the darkness all right disadvantage go hmm. natural one. No. Oh. high or low hmm. oh no uh low yes. uh roll your damage hmm. 13 Aurelia, oh, you no. should 13 damage to the back. <laughs> Bam! I'm not down. <laughs> How many hit points do you have? Three. <laughs> and Cole, he didn't hit something, man. No. Probably on its last... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's your turn, sir. Jump into that darkness and swing wildly. <laughs> I mean, you didn't have to tell me. Oh, no. That is not an encouragement. Um, yeah, fire. Mara, have not... you met us? I know. Uh, no, shooting's not working. And I didn't get hit. I only got hit once last time I was in there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to. There, and there's two less enemies. Yeah, I'm going to set set my uh, crossbow on the, on the sarcophagus, pull out mm -hmm. my dagger, and. <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> YOLO. Right in there. Uh, attack with disadvantage. Don't I feel like him. saying YOLO in the middle of attack should impose an extra disadvantage. <laughs> you can roll three well, dice and take the lowest. That's, that's why I didn't say it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you said a... it where the story <laughs> comes from. Oh, no. Not a natural one. Yeah, no, not it's not a natural, natural one. one because yeah. I have a higher... <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yep. So yeah, you go out and you just lunge into the darkness and swipe Listen for a second and then yep. <laughs> just air. All right. Wotan's back up. Oh boy. Um, really just feels like wind and like just right along the edge. Oh, I can see this. I can just see one all side of is this. getting. I'm gonna he, step. He, he, missed, he missed it by about three feet. I'm gonna keep an eye on because a lot of stuff is happening in this mist, and I feel like people are getting very close to attacking me on accident. Uh, so I'm gonna step out of the out of the darkness <laughs> on accident. <laughs> You choose and try and hit the skeleton that is in the darkness. Just try and like if I got a, if I got like a view of the sphere and it seems to be following the skeleton, I'm gonna try and hit center mass in the sphere. All right. Assuming still a disadvantage. Oh yeah, still a disadvantage. Eight. Yeah, I missed. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Goes wide again. Okay. Well. Yep, Aurelia is the closest because you weren't quite in melee with it, so it didn't have that problem in hand. Why do these character sheets keep vanishing? Okay. Uh, just normal attacks because you can actually see it coming. Yep. Nine is a miss. Yep. Is it ten a miss? Yes. 
All right. Yep. Two wild strikes at you, and you managed to just barely dodge them both times. You can hear the air ripping apart as these bl- blows go past. Not the standard whistle of a blade. These things are sharper somehow. Yeah. Don't. And it's Diamond's turn. Uh, how far into the, like, sarcophagus room is the darkness now? Uh, it's probably about 10, 15 feet away from the door. Hmm. So there's, like, a sarcophagus, like, next to the door. Can I just, like, start opening these bad boys up? If you wanted to. <laughs> yeah. Give me an athletics check. I just I put the away, and I'm just, like, this is being handled. <laughs> I believe in Aurelia. This could oh, certainly that's not end oh, that neat. I'm so strong. So you just grab the lid, squeeze, pick it up, set it up against the wall. Oh, look, dead guy. Huh. He's wearing <laughs> some shit. Reach out. Kind of glance around. Yeah, no, he. This is this is a dead guy. He's he's very emaciated, desiccated. I mean, he's he's been dead for a while. Good, good and dried. Probably some light embalming happened. You know, he's he's definitely uh definitely definitely shuffled it off and uh, probably not waking up anytime soon. Lift the lid. Five more minutes, mom. <laughs> <laughs> Marshall, what, who, what are we supposed to be looking for exactly? Puts puts the lid. Uh, perhaps we could deal with 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 the. No, the... no, 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 no. They got it. They got it. It's fine. Before <laughs> before we just start randomly ransacking my ancestor slash siblings tomb. Aurelia. <laughs> I talked to them back in. It's, it's in melee with me, isn't it? Uh, yes, currently it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't like this at put, all. This put, is not good. Put gun under chin and fire. Yeah, I'm going to try and fire at this thing. I have disadvantage. So. You do have disadvantage. Damn it. I hate that. Okay. I mean, you could always just swing it at its head. <laughs> I could, but that would, that would, I would have proficiency. It would do improvised weapon damage, though. I mean, 1d4 minus uh, 1. Yep, 1d4 minus 1. Yeah. (laughs) Great. I'm going to shoot it. Okay. I'm going to try and shoot it. Let's see what happens. No, 1d4 minus 1 plus your strength modifier. No! My gun breaks. No! Your gun, your gun jams. Yep. So yeah, you hold it up towards it, you pull the trigger, and there's just a click. Yeah, I lose that bullet too, don't I? Mm-hmm. Damn it. Okay, I'm good. All right, Cora. All right. Um, you do not hear a boom. Nope, you hit a click. Huh. Okay, I'm going to uh, let's see. I gotta hit this at some point. Or no, I just. Have- um, do 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 disadvantage. I'll touch. Nope. That, uh, you know what? What the hell? I'm gonna use my inspiration. All right. What is it? One d. One d eight. Fifteen. Illumis. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, I am so Every sorry. hero point ever in Everon. <laughs> that Action is point. not true. That yeah. is actively not true. I can't count how many times I was like, oh, there's no way they're going to. Oh, I almost feel bad about the fact that they're expen. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, 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 I guess they did. <laughs> I mean, I mostly spent my action points when i already had a huge modifier yeah like but yeah but yeah Woo. Eh, eh, eh. all right torvald and vershana are going at it uh at least one of them makes some contact at some point with each other no with the thing uh, Major and Heden, it's your guys' turn. Who's doing what? Mm. I'm waiting for Major to go. Okay. Because um... I made <laughs> Heden is intentionally going last. <laughs> I am still just holding a 
Eldritch Blast because I, I can't act. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly acceptable. I attack the darkness. You attack the darkness. Gonna hit Aurelia again. It's an 11. Nope. Nope. What the hell? I'll use my inspiration. Let's see what happens. Okay. 16? Just hits. Hey! hey. 13 force damage. So Aurelia, you are there. You are in pain. Your gun has jammed. Yep. And all of a sudden, this bolt of purplish energy sails over your shoulder smashing into the thing, punching a hole through the temple of its, uh, through the forehead of this skull, and those blue glowy eyes just whoosh. I killed it, which and means the, I get seven hit points. And the darkness vanishes as you guys see this skeletal figure wearing studded leather armor and these two blue glowing blades just fall backwards, clattering to the floor motionless. You're welcome. Dead. We're out of initiative. <laughs> Yay. Ow. Are you all right? My gun jammed. You can make a Tinker's Tools check if you want to try and. Uh, I want to look at all of it. these blades. I say, that... gathering up the ghost blades. Is that what that click was? Got one that you can't have, and I'm I'm looking yes. at it. Then I won't <laughs> identify it for you as I Thank begin you. to ritual cast identify on these things. <laughs> Eighteen. All right. So yeah, pull out a few tools, clear the jam, work the trigger and the mechanism. See if you can figure out what happens. This it's it's ready to fire again. All right. Once you once you reload. So for a single bullet. I gather what I can gather in, in and set down in a corner. And while everyone else is looking through the room, I am ritual casting identify on each of the weapons that I can get I have my hands on. Okay. That are the, uh, that are starting the, with the long swords or the or your dagger. Uh, starting with the long swords because I'm okay. less likely to use those, and so they can be handed off. Okay. Um. So you cast identify on this first one. It's this is called a death kiss blade. Um. Basically, it doesn't have any addition to attack, but it deals two dice of damage rather than one when you make a weapon attack. So the long sword deals two d eight plus your strength modifier. Okay, and is magical, I assume. Uh, is magical for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and all of them are? All of them are, yep. So the daggers deal 2d4 plus either strength or dex. Um, and I, what did I have? How many, what are they all? Uh, two long swords and a dagger. All right, this will take me 30 minutes to, to, to figure out, so. Yep. <laughs> Scene goes on. So Heden's busy. I sit down. And Aurelia is busy. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, as long as, as soon as the darkness uh, dropped, I dropped my uh, form, and then yeah, I'll look around for anything that says Irishana on it. Okay. Uh, I'm investigating. You find these are in, there's a number of sarcophagi here, as well as a spiral staircase leading further downward, right there. Um, none of them say anything regarding Kalistar, Irishana, elders, anything like that. Uh, go ahead and make investigation or uh, sorry, perception checks. Anybody who wants to, though, as you're checking out this room. Sure. Seven. Let's see what's here. Fun. Nine. <laughs> Not at disadvantage. Not at disadvantage. Eight. <laughs> so most of you are just going through, checking names, seeing if there's any identifying features, anything you can, can pick up. Uh, Cole, you come to a particular sarcophagus. Um, this one's basically a stone frame, but with kind of like a metal overlay to it. Uh, and it's definitely not Irishana the Elder's coffin, but there's definitely some gems set into the surface of this thing. Anybody looking, is anybody looking over here? Everybody else seems to be looking pretty significantly in other directions. Go ahead and make a stealth check if you're trying to do it on the DL. 
21. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody, nope. I, I'm using a, using a dagger to pop some of these gems out. Okay. Yep. Horrible, yeah, they're... horrible person. I just dead want people, to know that. Dead people do not need gems. <laughs> That's the person who is the warlock of the Raven Queen. <laughs> Hey, the Raven Queen is mostly concerned about: is it dead? Does it stay that yeah. way? <laughs> yeah, if it's if it's sentient, I mean, undead. Functionally, then this is almost kind of like my grave, my tomb. Yeah, that's also fair. <laughs> I just... Well, and and these are these yeah. are these are collective mausoleums. They're not right. like organized by family or anything. It's just: can you afford a grave site? Sure. Do this you person want definitely to pay could. for it? Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. No, I mean, like, honestly, Cole, you're, uh, well, actually, yeah. Anybody who wants to, give me a history check. Six. I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. 17. So, Maja, especially because you're very well aware being of the medical field, but all of you, honestly, the most valuable things in these tombs are the bodies themselves. Conflux has a limited supply of organic matter. And stealing a dead body, you could probably sell each one of these corpses, even they're in, in their advanced states of desiccation for probably 50 or 60 gold apiece on the black market. Hmm? No. I casually mutter something about my first order of business when I am when I reign supreme over the city being instituting mandatory corpse recycling measures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's what happens to executed prisoners. They how about, are sold to the highest bidder. How about voluntary organ donor programs? For <laughs> <laughs> Often, when we do the driver's license system, <laughs> there's an in, or probably it's better to have an opt-out organ donors right. out corpse recycling basically <laughs> would you like your corpse recycled in the leather working industry agricultural industry you know <laughs> just go down the list people that could use a body um but yeah people that could use a body people who are still alive and need transplants mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i mean you you're a good healer there major but you're not capable of doing an organ transplant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well yes. So anyways, I pop pop those you pop, gems you pop out. these five gems out. You're uh you're guessing they're probably worth anywhere from ten to fifteen a piece. Awesome. Or is just hovering at the the the, the way further down. Mm -hmm. They're smart enough at this point or made their wisdom save well enough not to go down by themselves again. Mm -hmm. uh, with Heaton taking a full half hour, that's enough time for people to spend hit dice on a short rest if you have any left and would like to. I assume, I'm gonna do that because that gives me my spell slots back. I assume not me because I am doing- You can't testing. because yeah. you're busy, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I take a short rest and I hang out with bubbles. I can't because I don't have any hit dice. Can left. I, <laughs> since I'm doing the repair as well, or not? Um. Yeah. You can still. Yeah. Okay. You. You. You'd still because the the repair takes about five minutes, honestly, to clear a jam. Yeah. So after I get done, Karshana, do you want me to look at your dagger? What does yours do? So, uh. <laughs> I'm uh, holding up the long swords. Diamond, you probably want this. Or takes it. Wotan, can you use this? Waving the long sword around haphazardly. Dab your eye out. Not really. I'm more axes and hammer style of dwarf. Can anyone else use this? No. What's the metal? What, what's it made I mean, out of? Virshana holds out a hand. May I? Sure. No one else can do is it. I don't care. So, these are Death Kiss Blades. They're magical and do extra bits of damage. They hit really hard and hurt a lot. I'm going to go out on a limb. Who would know? One is two. Yes. Yeah, if, yours if is, your dagger yours looks is. like mine, then yes, it is two. Yes. 
That's why I was like, no, no, don't spend another 10 minutes <laughs> identifying. And I will, I will hand, I will, I will hold the death kiss dagger out towards Cole. Ooh, snatch. Yes. <laughs> I'll trade you. Here's my dagger. I, I, you don't need to do that. Awesome. Fiddly <laughs> arms. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't throw. I can't hit. So they're useless <laughs> to me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so yeah. Shall useful. we? Uh, did was there? Uh, sorry, I was busy while I was busy looking at stuff while you guys were looking. There wasn't any other items that looked like they might need to be identified. Anyone found? No. No. All right. Cool. I'm good. I'm feeling I go, I'm feeling particularly I start healthy. walking down. Mm -hmm. I, I give her and them another light spell if Cora is still taking the front. You, I'll, I'll, I'll go first this time, maybe. Is that, oh, thank you. I mean, it's their, oh, it's, it, it's their family mausoleum. At the very least, keep an eye out for traps. Now yeah, that I'll do that. I'll, aware I'll, that these are problems. I'll walk next to them and keep an eye out for, for traps. All right. Are you guys going slow and quiet, fast and loud? What? I would prefer slow and fast quiet. And and quiet. quiet. <laughs> fast and quiet is not an option. Well, you said slow and quiet, fast and loud, or what? So I assumed there were other options. What about what about slow and loud? <laughs> Best slow, one. slow and loud is an option, yes. Clomp, clomp, clomp. So Torvald at the front. Narrating how we're walking down the halls. <laughs> Made your right I behind. Master Cole set his left there. foot forward. That is your left, am I correct? Walking slowly as you just have daggers just scratching against both sides of the of of the staircase you know, down. Slow and loud is when Hidden dies, and we come, and I come back as my uh, war forged pact of the host. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. Um. I mean, hold on just a second. Is it even worth it for Cora to try and be sneaky? I mean, that would nope. be a, a you tell me sort of thing. But nope. I'll give you a hint. It's not worth it for most of us to be sneaky. <laughs> clump, 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 clump. I mean, you know. So, are we going slow and quiet, or trying no. to, or no? I no. think we're I think we're literally going slow and loud at this point because I don't think we're trying to rush, but we can't exactly be quiet. Uh, <laughs> Kerr is kind of Russian. Okay. Kerr is kind of Russian a little so, bit. Fast, so and, fast loud. and loud. Options presented: fast and loud. Taken. All right, fast and loud it is. Can I scoop up bubbles? Uh, you can certainly try. Just, Just acid bubbles. burns as you're carrying the ooze. <laughs> Right, so you, you go to, to grab bubbles and you kind of squelch your fingers under him and start to lift and they just sort of go inside and start to burn. Are Earth Ganassi resistant to acid damage? Uh, that's uh, water That's Ganassi. water Ganassi. Ah, uh, water Ganassi, okay. Right. You take three acid damage uh, and he okay. sort of... Three sad damage. Okay. Well... And then just sort of scoots along behind you. He sort of slithers up over the uh, the blade master where he's fallen down. Yeah. And just kind of settles and rocks a little bit. And you can see him just dissolving a hole through that studded leather armor. Oh, yeah. It, oh. it looks like he is eating the skeleton with his ass. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, He's basically can... doing exactly that, yes. Oh man, can I do that? I pick up the studded leather armor, like pretty much that whole torso, and just carry that with me. Uh, I mean, it's got a huge hole burned in it right now, and it's not usable, but... No, I don't, no. It's... It's she wants to use it like a bowl to carry bubbles in. <laughs> oh, I mean, you carry him for about 20 seconds, and then yeah, he falls all the way head through head. and just <laughs> and just sort of Jellos down onto the floor. Uh, I'll leave the rest of the pieces instead of leather for him. I'm like, okay, just stay out of trouble. I'll be back. 
Oh, he's still following. At this point, he's he, at this point. You're pretty sure he's eating because he's bored. Yes, I get it. <laughs> I make- uh, but you guys move your way down the rest of the uh, the rest of the stairwell into another open room. This one has far fewer sarcophagi in it, but a number of jars, as well as a very large pile of bones just sort of scattered across the floor. This looks problematic. Does that might be like an undead monster or something? I'm going to make an assumption that you guys picked up the three skulls from the things that you did kill upstairs for your bounties. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's a well, lot of skulls in there that were probably worth a lot of money. There are a fair number of skulls there. There's a number of very large urns and jars as well, and a couple of coffins. Yeah. Uh, like uh, uh, like Major said, uh, Arcana, something like that, to see if there's any undead quality here. I mean, there's... Very obviously, a lot of dead quality here. It would, if you want to see if anything's moving, ju- that's just a perception check. I I unleash an eldritch blast into the pile of bones. Oh, okay. Go ahead and roll your attack. God damn it! Oh, um, I, did I have disadvantage? No. Did it matter? It, it's ten. Didn't matter. It's ten. Um, ten to hit an inanimate pile of bones. So you slam it into the pile of bones. I will remind you the last time somebody in our group cast oh, yeah. something at a large pile of dead things. This time, though, I'm not by myself, and there are many meat shields between me and it. <laughs> no, you're in front, because you're shooting, so you have front. to be in front. Yeah. And everybody roll some initiative. God, oh, God. I found the undead. Would you rather Please have found it that way? Please tell me way? it's a corpse mound. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Please you... tell me it's a corpse mound. Would you have rather we'll found it like it. that? But... Or with somebody stepping into it? Is that the one that in Eberron nearly yes. killed? Okay. Ten. Three! Seventeen. Uh, <laughs> natural one again! Hey. Yeah. Oh my God, Aaron. Was, like tired or something. What a long day for you, Maja. <laughs> I don't know. Did I do I'm any sorry. damage when I hit the bones? You might have. Hmm? All right, let me roll some initiative for Torvald and for Virshana. This. Oh, that's a that's a cool mini right there. I like I like that token a lot. Hmm? That's a. I mean, bone anybody twister. who wants to can make a religion check okay. as this mound of loose bones just morphs its way up into this Ooh. blob mass that takes on a rather terrifying, terrifying tornado-like bone storm. That definitely sounds like a corpse mound to me. It's oh, technically okay. called, well, let's see. <laughs> um, Cole, this is called a bone swarm. You've heard maybe one or two stories about these sort of things before. Basically, they're big and terrifying and murdery. Yay. <laughs> but Torvald is not dissuaded. Fear not, friends. We shall triumph over this monstrosity as well. And he's going to try to attack it. You go, Torvald. Orwell's gonna die. Yes. <laughs> he dies so that we might live. He's not, he's not at disadvantage. He dies so that his assassin can swear vengeance on us. And he swipes his rapier across it, but it's it's this dispersed mass of shifting particles and material. And it doesn't seem like he actually makes contact, which kind of sucks. Virshana also leaps to the front. Mm. Now clad with a new blade. Let's see? that he's wielding in both hands. God damn it. There we go. 
wow, uh, and slashes through it and scatters a large spray of vertebrae and femurs and one skull out from it. Oops. So there's 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 a level of damage. And it's Cora's turn. Okay. Uh, I mean, it is undead. It I'm is assuming. undead. I have a question for you. Yes? Could I roll insight to determine whether this thing is sentient in any capacity? Uh, sure. Give me a, give me a, give me a roll. Okay. Uh, 19. You're pretty sure not. Okay. Pretty sure this is a kind of base undead. It's big and it's probably maybe hungry, but. Yeah. It's All right. large and it's hungry. Chill touch it is. We've got a bubbles. We're fine. <laughs> 16. 16 a hit. For four necrotic damage. It is not. And it has necrotic. disadvantage on attacks against me. Okay. All right. Uh, Cole, your turn. Okay. Uh, Wotan first? Oh, wait. Sorry. Yes, Wotan. Oh, all right. Yep. Um, well, uh, I'm going to start backing away. Uh, and once I am at the back of the of the area, then I will open attack with my uh, my Eldritch Blast. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen's a hit. All right, then I will roll damage and also throw my last ring at it. Uh, seven force damage, an extra eight bludgeoning, and uh, DC fourteen strength save. All right, you slam into it and it looks like it would have been impacted by that ring and possibly but this thing is just too big and too loose and too dispersed to actually be pushed back by a small impact even a focused strike like that but it does take a level of damage and let's see so that was a total of 15 it is bludgeoning damage, if that matters, for being skeletons and bones. It doesn't in this case, unfortunately. Um, but duly noted, and now it's Cole's turn. Now I will, ca I will cast bonus action spiritual weapon off okay. to its right side with a natural one, so it doesn't hit. Nope. <laughs> uh, you smash open one of the jars. <laughs> cool. Do rupees come out? Uh, no, more bones that join the swarm. Awesome. Oh, lovely. Uh, and can. then main action, chill touch. Okay. 16. All right. 16's a hit. Go ahead and roll your damage on that one. Three. Three necrotic. Cool. And it has disadvantage on attacks against me. Yep. All right. Diamond. This guy is never regaining any hit points ever. Nope. Uh, gonna run up. See, swarms don't really work that way. <laughs> uh, I think it has more than enough. It doesn't need to regain them. Okay. So diamonds moving up to engage. <laughs> yep. Uh, summons thaw and swings with a twenty-three. Twenty-three is a hit. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Thirteen damage. Max damage. Look at that. Yeah. Crushing it. All right. <laughs> And it's magic, magic weapons. Magic weapons. Magic weapons. Okay. All right. Which brings us to Aurelia. Uh, I have one bullet left. This thing is weird. Make it count. Um, not gonna use it uh yet. Um, can I make the same? Well, yeah, I have. Would I be able to tell if this thing is sentient enough to be hit by psychic attacks or not? Um, can you can make same? an insight check. Insight check, but yeah. 15. I mean, there's some level of unifying 
impulse in there that might be affected by it, maybe. All right. I'll try and mind spike the inside of it. Okay. Uh, that's a... Oh, it's a wisdom save, 13. It just makes it. Dang it. Okay, so it takes half damage then. Okay. Wait, yep. did it have a mind? It does. There's appear. some level of consciousness in there, some level of intelligence. Yeah, uh, that's why I was asking for the exact same quest, th same thing. Okay. Yep. Oh, wait. Um. Yeah, it's a wisdom save. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Yeah, so five psychic damage. It's my turn. Okay. I do not get Sorry, Jeremy. Right. I did it's not okay. know that that's what you meant on that. So, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, no. You would, you would be out. aware of the same sort of thing. I was trying to figure out if it had some sort of intelligence or mind because otherwise I'm not using uh, uh, I, one of my spell slots. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do not get closer. I, in fact, back away. Okay. <laughs> my turn. All right. And then the bone swarm surges up the stairs, uh -huh. passing through. Let's see, Torvald, Vershana, Heden. Probably me. Uh, yeah, Korashana. And I was next Wotan to Vershana. and Diamond, or sorry, a uh, and Diamond then. So all of you guys need to make a dexterity save. Um, I didn't hear my name on that list, am I? No, I think you were still further in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, probably. It's got, it's got a limited amount of movement. Oh, so. 17. Oh, no. 13. Not a natural uh, one, just bad at dicks. Gotcha. Good thing that I got some temporary hit points for killing that guy. Six! Oh, God. <laughs> All right. So, Cody, you take four bludgeoning damage. Okay. Uh, Diamond, Heaton, Korashana, you all take nine bludgeoning damage as this thing just whelms its way past you. Those temporary hit points have saved me so much. They're great, aren't they? Yep. Um, and, oh, that's right, Vershana and... They need to make the saves as well. Torvald definitely succeeds. Prashana definitely does not. <laughs> Ow. All right. And... It's going to make a single strike at, let's see who it can reach. Um, based on who hit it hardest, Virshana. But a 12 does not hit Virshana. So they are, he is fine. Okay. Which brings us to Heden. Uh, I'm inside it now. Yes. Well, no, it moved through and past you and then pulled back. So it ran over me and then backed back up over me. Yep. <laughs> okay. That's what it do. That's not nice. I still haven't had no, a long rest. I still haven't had a long rest, so I can't I don't have my burning hands back. Um My only attack cantrip, my only attack spell is <laughs> <laughs> Eldritch, Eldritch Blast. Blast. All right. Mm -hmm. And or produce flame, but Eldritch Blast does more. So Eldritch Blast. And it's more aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Does a 12 hit it? A 12 does not. Mm. Oh. I'm rolling. Yep. Great. You It'd fire this Eldritch roll. Blast at it, and literally a hole in the swarm opens up. It passes through, and the hole closes. It'd be great if I could roll more than a 10 more than once. <laughs> Major. Hmm. Okay. You got yourself a super, super undead thing here. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, raise your hand if you are seriously injured. Great. Um, I mean, more than half, I assume, counts as serious. Yeah, more than half counts as seriously, especially because I don't think you have that many hit points. Oh, so I'm not more than half. 
I'm at half. I, I'm trying to figure out priorities. That's why I asked. Um, I'm, I'm only four hit points down. Even though I'm damaged, I think I still have more hit points than a fair number of the people. Okay. There. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the person that actually does melee combat is fine. Uh, yeah, I think. Let's go for diamond this time. Did Cora last time. It's arbitrary. Um, I cure wounds on diamond and then moving trying to get a decent amount of distance between me and any like area of effect slash group things with whatever movement I have left. All right. Which may provoke an attack of opportunity. I'm not sure. No, nah, you, you wouldn't be quite in melee with it just because with your being behind diamond there. I don't think. Let me look at its stats, actually, because it might have reach. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a touch spell. Yeah, actually, yep. So you will have an attack of opportunity against you. That's fine. Okay. I figured. So diamond heals 15. And I assume a 26 hits you? Yeah. All right. Make me a strength save. You take 10 bludgeoning damage. 16? But you are not knocked prone. All right. I am still doing okay. All right. And you are hustling back out of reach. Yeah. All right. Torvald attacks. And theoretically, I have taken its reaction. So. Uh, you have definitely taken its reaction. Ooh. And Torvald accomplishes something very helpful. Does he deal damage? He does deal damage, yes. He makes a swipe at it with his rapier this time, and this time a number of fragments go flying off and land inert on the other side of the room. Um, Vershana makes two attacks. One misses, one hits. And the thing is starting to look a bit fragmented and the, the, the pile of bones that makes this thing up is quite a bit smaller than when it first started. Um, Korishana. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and do that thing then. Mind spike. Okay. So yeah, wisdom. Yeah, it's going to have to make a wisdom save, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And that is a 13. Nice damage roll. 22 psychic damage. Damn. It's good. So, Koroshana, you reach out and you cast your mind spike into it. And you see a number of these skulls that are swirling around this tightly packed mess just explode into fragments. No, we need those. <laughs> <laughs> All Pick right. Pick up the pieces and glue them back together. It's fine. Well, to be fair, we can right. turn them in for a bounty if we're dead. Yeah, that's true. You're right. I'm gonna keep building. I'm gonna keep building distance because I was already at the back, and then it got closer. So I'm gonna build some more distance. Okay. Uh, and fire. Well, actually, no. Uh, instead of firing again, I'm going to cast ring strike. Okay. Uh, I don't. I, I, yeah, I don't need to make the, the attack roll. Um, yeah. It's, Pull up three more rings because I can only cast a second level, which animates three rings. Okay. And Cole. Uh, all right. So, um, am I in melee with this thing, or is it? Uh... No, it's it's reconstituted itself, kind of down towards. It's mostly in melee with uh, Diamond Vershana and Torvald right now. Okay. Then uh, my spiritual weapon is going to come up from behind it. And Pow. smack with a 12, probably. Miss, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to ghost hand it again. Okay. 16 does hit. Mm -hmm. Six necrotic. All right. Diamond. Mm -hmm. Again with 21. That's a hit. Mm -hmm. 12 damage. How do you want to do this? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she she lunges out and she's like, "Don't hit elephant mom!" And <laughs> I've said the, um, the bone tornado with thong. All right. Wow, you actually said that out loud. 
Yeah, no, Dad totally said that out loud. Oh, that was Hayden's response out loud. (laughs) The pile of bones just collapses to the floor. Yay! You're pretty sure it's dead. Does it have a or multiple heads? I mean, there's a number of skulls here you can pick up. Yeah, picking up skulls. Do 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 do. How yeah. many skulls can there's we acquire? Skulls that were part of the bone tornado definitely count. How many skulls do we acquire? Skulls in sight count. The guards <laughs> don't know what's down here. <laughs> Let's see. Must be honorable about this. Seven hundred. Wow. You guys get 40 intact skulls. Filled bags. Four nice. zero. All right. We have met our we have met our rent. <laughs> Everything else is gravy. So Jack. <laughs> yes. General just like given that this is kind of in my do I have a sense that that might be taken as a suspicious number that means you didn't actually do your job and just went grave robbing? You don't really know? Give me just a give me a just a straight intelligence roll. Fifteen. Uh, Given that it's going to be a group of nine people leaving who have apparently functioned as a unit. Probably though. I mean, they might be like, wow, that's a pretty good haul, but you're pretty sure that you guys will be able to pass that off. All right. And you're also very aware that several of your group might be able to just magically lie to people and get away with it. Yeah, well, I don't like that. But... No, I, I figured you might, you, Major might not, but but yeah. Not lying if we did fight the thing that had all 20 skulls in it. 40 skulls. 40 skulls. 40 skulls. Thank you. Sorry. I am. We currently have. The I said fine. I'm letting this go. We currently have 51 skulls. You do currently have 51 skulls. I'm keeping track. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> um. But at this point, the rest of the room seems quiet unless you guys want to dig through the jars and the few coffins that are here. I mean, Do not want unless there's anything it? that seems indicative of... Yeah. Yeah, I'll have another look. It seems like it might be a Shauna. Yep. Yeah, looking around, uh, the jars are mostly gnomes and halflings. So that doesn't seem about right. And the sarcophagi are primarily elven. Uh, Aurelia, you're able to tell just from the exterior carvings. Dead elf, dead elf, dead elf, dead elf. Oh. All the rest of these bones, you're not sure where they came from, although there are a number of broken jars as well. So probably some from there, but there's a lot more. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you got the skulls. That's all you're supposed to pick up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Hey, look, there's a staircase. Art. Hmm. I'm just wondering, like, if this would give me any indication of what something terrible might be down below that emanated this thing. Um, Are these the ages of of what we've passed through before, do they tend to be a large uh, date range for a mausoleum, or are they similar? Seems pretty consistent. Okay, and the bones? There is a range on both the bones and best you can tell. I mean, Mm -hmm. it's hard to tell. It's hard to accurately estimate how old a bone is just by looking at it, you know? Uh Um, But but... they seem to have similar preservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. To be fair, I feel like we're going to find out if there's something scarier further down very quickly. Yes, but I I would like to know before we walk into it. a staircase, and I'm going down the staircase. Right. (laughs) <laughs> so for Ashana, you walk down the staircase let yep. you. into a much smaller chamber okay probably about 15 by 15 at the most but oddly an equally sized bone swarm <laughs> and the only thing that's here 
is a single, fairly small, not like halfling size, but small for something that would qualify as a medium-sized creature, stone coffin, <clears throat> and a number of carvings on the walls. Behind, yeah. slightly behind, raised up on a shelf, is what looks like once a glass box, like a display box almost. Mm -hmm. The door, however, has been struck through, that glass shattered. All that remains inside is a kind of half decayed piece of velvet. It seems to have some level of indentation on it. Okay. And then there is a gap just a crumbled away area. A tight squeeze for somebody of your size. Although with determination, you might be able to wriggle your way down in there. That's burst through, seems to have either collapsed or uh, been, been broken, leading into a very rough sort of dirt and rock tunnel much smaller, not comfortable to get through, like I said, that just leads down, down, down into darkness. Mm -hmm. If anybody else follows... I mean, I, I'm probably yeah. following Cora because uh, Cora getting separated was previously bad. Yeah. <laughs> Probably shouldn't let anyone in the party get too far away from the rest of us. Ershana has followed pretty closely behind. Since this is sort of a request as well. Yep. Uh, and there's not really room for everybody down there. Yeah, I, I haven't uh, gotten out there yet. Yeah, I, I was looking if it, any of these sarcophagi were similarly decorated as the one I found before. <laughs> give me a perception check. Mm. <laughs> see, if, see if you find anything. Nope. Eight. Natural yeah. Life. Nope. Doesn't look like there's anything valuable here. Hmm. That bone moved. I'm not. I'm not. Who's <laughs> <laughs> gonna so, hang at the top of the stairs? Simon goes. Okay. I'll this, send Jinx down there and watch through their eyes. <laughs> this is the old crest of. Her ward. Vershana's over at one wall, putting their hand on a part of a carving. Dancer's court. Yes. That was where she lived. And then sort of without much ceremony goes over and just heaves the top off the stone sarcophagus, leans it up against the wall, and looks down. I look in. It's a humanoid skeleton. Mm -hmm. Curled almost to fetal position, which explains the, the reduced length of the, the coffin. Yeah, go ahead and give me a perception check if you want to, Korshana. Yep. Nineteen. So you look down, you notice two things. <clears throat> the hands are crossed over in sort of the classic dead person pose. Right. And there's a ring on the pinky finger of the right hand. And then your eyes kind of drift to the side and there's words carved on the interior of the sarcophagus lid. Okay. Eyes of the rune keeper. It's in quarry. Okay. And it should be in your journal now, hmm? mm -hmm. under crypt inscription. 
The enemy lurks in darkest ice with chained slaves frozen fast. Corruption risked to pay the price and end a hunt whose time has passed. The summons kept where giants slept, empowered by the soul-filled core, with blood of prey to paint the way that opens his abyssal door. And that is where we will leave tonight's episode. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. Goodbye.